we're going to look at the laws of sine and cosines. We're going to prove them first, and once we've proven them, we're going to be able to apply them to any triangle situation. Let's use DeAlgebra to prove the law of sines. So if we have a triangle ABC, first thing we're going to do is draw a perpendicular from A to BC. And we've just done that. Now we create a new point D at that junction between the perpendicular and the opposite side. Next, we're going to label the opposite sides, little a being the opposite side of angle A, little b being the opposite of, of angle B, and little c being the opposite side of angle C. So we're going to label that perpendicular that connects A and D, we're going to label that H. It's kind of like the height of the triangle, if you remember from the finding the area of the triangle. So this H represents the perpendicular between point A and its opposite side BC. So what we've done is taken this triangle and carved it into two right triangles by making that perpendicular. So what's true about some of the properties of right triangles? Let's look at the trigonometry of this right hand triangle. What's the relationship between H and B? Well, if we look at this right, this right triangle, H is the opposite side and B is the hypotenuse. So let's just label these opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So we know that H over B is opposite over hypotenuse is the sine of angle C. So H over B is equal to the sine of C. Now let's look at the triangle on the left. So the hypotenuse is now side C. The opposite side is that perpendicular H that we've created. And now we have a new relationship that's true of the left-hand triangle. And that relationship is opposite of our hypotenuse, H over C is equal to the sine of angle B. So we're going to write those two down and kind of look at them. They're, they seem to be related somehow. Well, what's in both of them? H. H is what's in common between the left-hand triangle and the right-hand triangle. And H has got to be the same for both triangles. So if that's true, let's solve both of these for H and set them equal to each other. So if we multiply both sides by B, what we get is H equals B times the sine of C. So let's put that over here for future reference. Now let's take what we found out about the left-hand triangle, H over C equals sine B, and solve it for H in a similar way. If we multiply both sides by C, we get H equals C times the sine of B. Well, putting those two things side by side, we can set them equal to each other because they're both equal to H using the transitive property. If two equal things are equal to the same thing, then they are also equal. Therefore, B times the sine of C equals C times the sine of B. So if we divide both sides by B, what we're going to get is the sine of angle C is equal to C times the sine of B over B. And if we multiply both sides by B, and now if we divide both sides by C, what do we get? We get the law of sines. The sine of angle C over C is equal to the sine of angle B over B. You might be wondering, well, how do we get this for, how do we get angle A into the mix? And the way you do that is by drawing another perpendicular. Now because of the, the type of angle we have here, the perpendicular from C to AB actually doesn't go through the triangle itself. So we're going to have to extend AB to actually visualize that. So now we've created a new perpendicular line that goes through point D and that new side is right here at CD. So now we have a new H and it's kind of weird and hard to visualize but we have still created two right triangles and we can, we can find what we need about angle A using the same principle. And we're going to find using this, we get the total law of sines here. And the law of sines, again, will simply state that the ratio of the sine of the angle to the length of its opposite side is the same for all three sides and angles of the triangle. We have a pair, a joint pair of the angle and the side opposite, and the ratio of their sines to their lengths is always the same. And that proves the law of sines. We'll prove the law of cosines using 
the same triangle. Let's start by carving it up into two right triangles because we know how to deal with right triangle trigonometry. So we're going to draw that perpendicular AD and give it the label H for height. But we have a little problem using the Pythagorean theorem here because this side A actually represents the whole length of BC and we've now cut it up into two parts. So let's try to rewrite BD and DC, these two parts of A, into something that breaks it down. So we'll break up A into two parts, Y, which is on this left-hand triangle, and X, which is on this right-hand triangle. Using the Pythagorean theorem on this left-hand triangle, what do we know? We know that in the left-hand triangle, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the two legs squared, H squared plus Y squared equals the hypotenuse C squared. But frankly, we don't like having the y in there. So let's use the trigonometric functions to relate y to the triangle. Well, we know y is the adjacent side and c is the hypotenuse. So y over c is equal to the cosine of b. Therefore, if we multiply both sides by c, y is the same thing as c cosine b. So what we've done is actually kind of gotten rid of y by writing it in terms of the parts of the triangle we had originally. So let's look at this big side A that we split up into two parts, Y, which we now know is C cosine B, and this other part. Well, by geometry, we know that both parts add up to give you A, so A is equal to X plus Y. So if we wanted to find out what X is, all we had to do is subtract out Y from both sides. So if A is X plus Y and we subtracted Y from both sides, we get that X is equal to A minus Y, and since we know already that y is c cosine b, then the remaining part x is going to be a minus c cosine b. What we're trying to do is really get a relationship that only involves those original parts of the triangle a, b, and c, and the angles a, b, and c. Put that up here, so now we know y is equal to c cosine b, and x is equal to a minus c cosine b. Now we already said that c squared is equal to h squared plus y squared from that left-hand triangle's Pythagorean theorem. Well, now let's look at the right-hand triangle. In the right-hand triangle, B is the hypotenuse, so B squared equals H squared plus X squared. So you've got the two relationships between the left and the right-hand triangles, which are both true. They both contain H squared. So if they both contain H squared, let's rewrite both of these in terms of H squared and set them equal to each other. Okay, so h squared is equal to c squared minus y squared in the left-hand triangle, and h squared equals b squared minus x squared in the right-hand triangle. We've got h squared by themselves on both sides. Again, the transitive property, if this is equal to h squared and this other thing is equal to h squared by the transitive property, both things are the same. This leads to the critical idea that c squared minus y squared is the same as b squared minus x squared. Notice we took what was in common to both triangles, the segment we call h, solved for both sides using the Pythagorean theorem, and this is what we got. But we still want to get rid of y and x. How do we do it? Well, we do it by substituting what we know up here, that y is equal to c cosine b, and x is equal to a minus c cosine b. We're going to take those and substitute them in wherever we see a y and an x here. So that's what we have after the substitution. c squared minus c cosine b, the quantity squared, equals b squared minus the quantity a minus c cosine b squared. So again, substituting for x and y into here. Notice now we've rid ourselves of anything except the original a, b, and c and their angles. Well, let's simplify. So when we expand out the left side, we get c squared minus the quantity c cosine b squared. And then the right side is b squared minus, and then this is a binomial expansion. And so we're going to have, be careful to distribute the negative term, minus a squared. And then we have the middle term from the binomial expansion, which is 2ac times the cosine of b. But because it's negative in here and then we're multiplying by a negative, it becomes positive. And then the last term would normally be positive c cosine b, the quantity squared, but instead it's negative because of the negative side. Now, what you notice here is that there are two terms 
that are exactly the same on both sides of the equation. So we can add that same term to both sides and that big crazy thing will disappear. Which leaves us with this, which is pretty close to the law of cosines, but about one step away. So let's clear the table and move some things around and get the law of cosines from that. So let's take these other terms and move them to the other side, the a squared and the 2ac cosine b, leaving only the b squared on the right hand side. So if we move those terms to the other side, we have b squared equals c squared plus a squared minus 2ac cosine b. And if we just rearrange the terms a little bit, it becomes the more familiar law of cosines b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b. By the way, if we just redrew where the altitude was and repeated this process for the other points, we would get the other laws of cosine, which are here. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a, and also c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. Notice the pattern. If we're trying to find a side, the side squared is the sum of the other two sides squared. This first part is the Pythagorean theorem, which applies in the case of only a right triangle. But we have a correction factor, which is this right-hand part, which corrects it if it's not a right triangle. It subtracts two times the product of the two other sides times the cosine of the angle you're, tr you're trying to find, or the angle that's opposite from the left-hand side. So this is a correction factor. Why does it work? Why does the Pythagorean theorem a special case of this? Because in the Pythagorean theorem, the angle is 90 degrees. What's the cosine of 90 degrees? Zero. So therefore, in the Pythagorean theorem, all three of these right-hand parts drop out. So we've proven the law of sines and the law of cosines by using properties of triangles in the Pythagorean theorem.